Nonetheless, uh, maybe we can segue into our next topic, which I wanted to go over, which is exercise variation. And I'll give you an example, I guess, the lockdown mm. uh, here in Toronto. I was, you know, I only had a select few pieces of equipment. So I was, and I kind of got emotionally attached, which is red flag right there to certain exercises. Cause you think, wow, this exercise feels great today. And then, you know, six months down the line, things start to creep up on you, especially with some, maybe certain exercises, like being in the extreme ends of range with dips, for example, was, I'm just going to give you one very specific example. I probably did that for like a year and a half straight because of the lockdown. I had two parallel bars, some dumbbells adjustable that went up to 70 pounds. That was pretty much it in a flat bench. So I was kind of left with certain exercises that A, I enjoyed. B, hey, I'm kind of emotionally attached, which I shouldn't be, but I am. Okay, fine, fair. Everyone has those. I think we have all been through that phase. And, you know, this is what I got to work with. So a year comes down the line and, you know, little things start to creep up, overuse type stuff that could have otherwise maybe been avoided if there was some variation there. So maybe, and maybe you could touch on the pros and cons. The pros of, hey, you don't want to switch things up every week because in terms of progression, muscle growth, maybe that's not ideal, but you also don't want to keep the same exercises, especially when there may be exercises that, like we had mentioned, in the extremes of range, your whole entire body weight, maybe with weights attached, dips, for example, for a year plus straight, twice a week. So yeah, maybe you could touch on that. (laughs) Sorry, that was loaded, but- absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, no. It's, 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 it's loaded, but, uh, and, and no pun intended there for, for being in a loaded stretch position, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a good question. And I think, um, I like that you also said, Hey, there, there can be cons to having, you know, variations. So I think some important things to remember is that, um, just to define our terms, variation, is not the same thing as randomization. And another thing to consider is that variation does not equal an endorsement of the weaker muscle confusion principle, right? Um, and those things can very easily morph into the other without an understanding of why, when, and how variation can be helpful. So sometimes I think it's easier to describe what you don't want to do. So um, a lot of this has come from, you know, we have it in the research, but the bros have been saying this since the, since the, the 40s, you know? Um, you need more variety if you want to hypertrophy everything. So that doesn't mean you need to go full-blown muscle confusion, um, but it does mean that if you're bodybuilding, you can't, f- you, well, you shouldn't, I should say, follow a highly limited set of exercises. You can still be a minimalist, but a minimalist for bodybuilding is going to look different than a minimalist for, for powerlifting, right? The powerlifting or weightlifting is literally just work up to a max on the main lifts every single day. If you survive, you're actually going to be a lot stronger. That's the Bulgarian system, right? A minimalist bodybuilder, you know, leg day might just be, squat, hamstring, curl, leg extension, calf raise, you know, but that's still a lot more exercises than the power lifter would do. Uh, you know, upper body might be horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull, get out, you know? Um, and then you might have one other day where you do some, some isolation movements for, uh, the, the delts and, and, and buys and tries. So I think there's various ways you can approach this, but ultimately if you filter yourself into being more concerned or more, more interested in hypertrophy or more interested in improving strength on specific movements, you're starting at very different points on the spectrum of variation. So that's kind of the the big picture concepts to get more specific to your loaded question, Kenny. um, I think it is very important to have variation uh, and to auto-regulate that and to listen to your body. And you will figure this out with training um, over time. Like for example, I know that if I do, you know, supinated curls with any type of heavy load for more than two or three sessions in a row, I start to get elbow pain. So there are things I can do to work around that. I can make sure that every other session I'm doing either a hammer curl or I'm doing, uh, you know, BFR so that the load is so light that it doesn't actually cause an issue. And then I can actually train my arms two to three times per week if I want, no problem. But if I just kind of go, right, I've got a barbell at home and that's it. I'm doing barbell curls, progressive overloads the way to go. Pretty soon I'm not even able to do pull-ups or rows because my elbow pain is so bad and I can't lock out on bench press and the whole cart has fallen apart just because I've been too stubborn and too attached to a barbell curl because of Arnold or, or emotional attachment, whatever I have. So I think you're, you're very astute in identifying that a lot of people do have emotional attachment to certain exercises. And I think the fitness industry, a lot of the time stokes that fire uh, because we say things like the squat is the king of all exercises, or, you know, you've got a deadlift or you've got to do barbell rows. We have these um, not so logical attachments to certain uh, core key or main movements, which makes sense from a strength perspective. But I think from a hypertrophy perspective, it's all about 
can I load tissue without overloading that tissue in a negative way, like the joint, the joint structures? Uh, do I enjoy it? Is it something that I can keep progressing on? And then how do I set up a structure to continue to do that? Um, and that's going to take a lot more individualization, again, auto-regulation. And there is uh, one really good study uh, that was done by Rausch and colleagues, I think in 2018 or 2017. And it's called, uh, it's, it's, it, they look at AES, which is auto-regulated exercise selection. And importantly, they took trained men with a fair amount of experience, good amount of strength, and they put them on a three times per week program, a bodybuilding program. And the fixed exercise order group, they had an exercise for the biceps, triceps, back, chest, shoulders, uh, quads, and hamstrings on each day that was different. So they did each exercise three times per week with a fixed order. The auto-regulated exercise selection group had three options for each one of those that they could do on any three days. So if they wanted to, they could do bench, bench, bench for chest. They could do leg extension, leg extension, leg extension for quadriceps. Now that's not what they did though. Um, there was a fair amount of variation between individuals and what they selected, but the overall outcome was that the auto-regulated auto exercise order got bigger and got stronger than the other group. And I think this is not to say that auto-regulation is better than non-auto-regulation. It's to say that if you give trained lifters with experience structure and direction and options so that they can better individualize their training, it'll probably have better outcomes. What kind of issues could you potentially run into by having a set deload structure? Like, let's talk about the pros, but also the cons. Like the pros maybe okay, this guy's doing a deload, great, thumbs up. But maybe there's cons to that as well, when it's set every fourth week, for example, and there's no wiggle room.